thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, I know a couple more people are going to be coming and going here as we start. Um, we won't go super long, but definitely want to give folks the opportunity to ask some questions and, and comment. Uh, there's the chat function. If you'd like to, throughout uh, this, you can put anything in that chat function, either to the whole group or directly to me or whomever. Uh, feel free to say hi and, and whatever in there. Um, I'll try to monitor it just in case there's any pressing questions in there, um, but I'll try to really go for the questions and discussion more towards the end, um, if that's okay with everybody. Um, so here we go. Let's get, uh, get rolling. I'm going to share my screen with uh, the PowerPoint. Nice. All right. Well, thanks for joining, everyone. Uh, it's like to have you here. Uh, again, this is being recorded, so we'll we'll put it up on our blog afterwards, um, and then MRV TV will we'll post it on their YouTube channel, I believe, as well later on, so you can see it in a couple of extra spots. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is uh, our newly approved uh, strategic plan at the Mad River Path. Um, we have on here Mac Rood, our board president. Um, I think there's some other board members. I can't see the full list right now, um, but I think a few other board members are going to try to join at some point. Um, and then I'm sure some of our, our close partners are, are here as well. Um, so this strategic plan, plan is an update to the last one that was ending in 2020. And then we finally got around to uh, approving this one uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, so it's brand spanking new. And some of this is certainly relevant to going farther than five years in advance, but it does give us a good five-year focus um, starting now. Um, so just to kind of get everyone oriented, I'm sure folks are pretty familiar with the layout of the land, but here's just a little fly through on Google uh, Earth Pro starting in Warren. Um, it doesn't have, it doesn't show the path sections, but you can see the field right back there uh, where the Warren path starts and it goes through the woods. Now we're heading north up 100, passing over. Here's the Sugarbush Pond and Yestermorrow. Now we're cruising up right here to uh, this Fiddler's Green and downtown. We do this hard right to head kind of northeast, continue northwards all the way up towards Moortown. So that's where we just flew is really the, the mission of the path of where we're looking to connect and have been connecting for a uh, better part of 30 years, actually at, at least 30 years now. Um, so a lot of folks here are familiar with our vision and our mission. Uh, there's, a, you know, there's a little bit of a difference between a vision and a mission if you're not uh, aware of that. The mission is really what we're looking to do. Uh, and the vision is, well, the vision is really what we're looking to do with some specifics in the mission and it helps us guide on, on to complete that vision. So of course, for the last 30 years, we've been trying to connect Warren and Moortown with one continuous path um, that's publicly available. And what we've done recently is add to that a little bit where we're now looking to connect Irisville to the Long Trail. It's basically uh, what I call DT to LT, downtown to Long Trail um, with uh, one continuous trail as well. So that's pretty neat. And we've, we've already, there's already a lot of headway on that, which uh, we'll get to in a minute. This is a little uh, timeline from the past 30 years of the major accomplishments. This by no means covers everything, but it does cover some of the big stuff um, right from the start when uh, the MRV Rivers and Trails Committee was formed from that, within a few years after that, the uh, Mad River Path was developed as its own organization and Friends of the Mad River was also created from that. Um, and we still work pretty closely together as two separate organizations, but it's, it's kind of neat to know that we were both formed out of the same thought process. Um, going back to our first section, you know, in 1989 was the Warren Path. Uh, the East Greenway and the Millbrook Trail was created in the early 90s. Um, and from then, it's, it's or since then, it's, it's been a lot of, a lot of stuff has happened um, to where we are today. Um, and there's, it's, I think it's important to acknowledge that some chunks of time, there may not have been a lot of progress with getting a, a new path or a new trail section completed, but there's a lot of things, um, if, if anyone's here, I'm sure a lot of you are involved with nonprofits in different ways. Sometimes there's some reorganization or some um, internal building that needs to happen. Um, and some of that is, is identified in here. Like in, I believe in uh, between about 2000, 2007, there's a lot of 
major improvements happening within the organization, which then led to a lot of progress after that. Um, so there's, there's periods of time where you'll see that. Um, and I could certainly go through more of this if anyone wants, um, but this is, this is available on the strategic plan. If you want to check it out too, I should mention, you can go to the MRP website, matterverpath.org, click on our most recent blog post uh, or one of the most recent ones, and you can find this whole document if you want to follow along too. It's, on, it's in a PDF. Um, so here we are today with the path sections all the way down here in Warren to the south and then up here towards Moortown, which we're working our way from and towards. Um, up here we have Mad River Park. We're working to connect Mad River Park to um, the West Greenway. We have everything downtown. Uh, Sugarbush Pond and Yestermorrow down to uh, Riverside Park. And then over here is the Millbrook Trail uh, where it's co-located located with some other trails. Um, these are the red arrows show the connect, you know, the major connections that we're trying to make and, and working on along near the river valley bottom. And then uh, these other two arrows that just got added are DT to LT, downtown the Long Trail project. Uh, so the, the strategic plan has six major goals. And then under those six goals are 24 specific strategies um, not 24 strategies each within six goals, but an accumulative 24 strategies to get those six goals. Um, so we'll just kind of cruise through those um, and we, uh, you'll, you'll get a better sense of, of what we're doing. So goal one, of course, the kind of the headline goal is connecting Warren, faced in Waitsfield and Moortown with the one continuous pathway. Now to do that, um, our strategies, um, I think there's four or five different strategies here. One of them is ensuring good communication with landowners. Uh, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions, or there's a few misconceptions out there of what it really means to host a, a path or, or a trail on their land. Uh, so we wanna make sure that people who own land really know what it means to, to host a path or post a trail. Um, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot of flexibility and options built in. Uh, so we want people to know that uh, we can be really flexible. For example, uh, there might be an ideal route for the path, but we're more than open to looking at alternative routes to get around, you know, say that someone's house is kind of near an ideal uh, location for the path. We'll go way around um, and we could add some, uh, some privacy blockage blockages like uh, cedar trees, things like that. So there's a lot of flexibility in there. So just keeping open, good communication with the community in general is really important um, to make progress. Uh, today is kind of, you know, an example of that, just letting folks know where we're heading, what we're doing. Um, expanding uh, and using the tools to protecting the path sections, which is super important. You know, there's a lot of work that goes into creating a path section and if, if we can't protect it permanently or in perpetuity, then there's a chance that all that work will be for nothing some years down the road. So we wanna try to do the best we can in protecting um, the trails that are out there. And we, uh, we'll, I'll get into that. That's actually its whole other goal is, is how we're developing these tools, which I'll get to in a few minutes. Uh, looking for new path routes that haven't been explored. Uh, I think these folks are looking for birds, but you get the idea, uh, looking for path sections. Um, sometimes we need binoculars to do it. Uh, so there's obvious places right along the river where it might be ideal, but you know we've been working on it for a while and uh, those obvious places haven't worked out yet. They still might, but uh, it's important that we start looking off maybe into the hills a little bit um, and coming up with alternative ideas that maybe haven't been thought about before. So getting creative um, is going to be really important to complete this goal. Um, and making sure that community involvement is solid is super important. Uh, There's a local uh, Boy Scouts troop who built the Mint Bridge a couple of years ago. We call it the Mint Bridge. That's all wild, or well, now wild mint. I'm out behind the Swanson Inn on uh, Karen's land of the, the uh, Mad River Vet, goes up to the Millbrook Trail. Um, so making sure that there's a lot of community involvement is important to, to make sure the community stays involved. Um, but then also beyond volunteering, it's making sure that we get surveys out to make sure that we're understanding what the community actually wants in trails and paths. You know, we might have a, an idea of what we want, but folks in the community might have a different idea on, on what they want. So. You, we did a survey uh, last winter, which I think was pretty helpful. So we'll keep doing them now and then um, just to get the pulse in the community. And, and again, or, uh, events like this, you know, when we can't be in person, at least we can chat online and we can get your thoughts. Uh, 
people are online. We always try, I always try to stay available. You know, my cell's on the website, you can email me. The board members are throughout the community, so you can always talk to any of us anytime uh, if you have thoughts and ideas. So here's goal two, connecting uh, Irisville, or maybe the river you wanna, depends on how you wanna look at it, up to the long trail. Uh, and this is ongoing, you know, we're identifying gaps using parcel maps um, and talking to landowners to figure out uh, where we can build a, a, a trail or a path to get in between. Uh, the Millbrook Trail, as I mentioned before, is a pretty good chunk of that area. So we're hoping to work with Sugarbush and a lot of other landowners uh, to help complete that. Um, and once the gaps are identified and we can get permission, then it's about routing those trails, finding a good route and building them. Um, here's David Hodgson, our, our seasonal trails manager, who's awesome. Um, he's got an engineering background, which is really helpful for, for a lot of things. Uh, but beyond David, getting help with volunteers um, is gonna be important for us completing uh, these new sections on this area. Um, and again, using these uh, trail protection tools like easements, uh, buying land uh, is all important for, for making sure these trails last for generations, really. That's what we're looking for. Uh, goal three is uh, continuing to build connections between the trail networks and between the special places that are around the valley. This is not just a matter of pathing for sure. It's a, it's a huge team effort and collaboration among the different trail organizations and, and beyond the trail organizations too. Uh, just other groups in general um, have an interest in this between the economic value that these bring and just the enjoyment and quality of living that making these connections uh, brings. I mean, a part of that is making sure that when we are putting in these, these new connections, and this, this is for any new pass section or new trail, that we're, that we're not harming the wildlife or natural communities or the, the rare kind of remote areas that are left um, while we're doing that. So being very conscious about how we're installing these and, and building these and where they're going, I think is really important. Uh, a lot of the identifying has already been done. Uh, the MRV moves, if you're familiar with that, is a process that uh, uh, maybe five years ago started, probably started a while longer than that, but the document was uh, finalized a few years ago. Uh, the planning district had a lot to do with that. You know, it was a big uh, effort among all of the groups. Uh, a lot of folks might not be aware that there's a kind of an informal group called the MRV Trails Collaborative. Uh, that's a lot of the, there's something like 27 different groups a part of it. If you count all the organizations that are involved with trails and recreation in the valley, um, that includes folks like the Long Trail, uh, the Ridge Runners for snowmobiling, you know, the Riders, Matter of Riders, um, and, and many others for sure. Um, so we're, we, a lot of those have been identified and we're, and we're ongoing identifying those, those connections. Um, like I just said, it, it takes definitely a village to do this. So uh, we're, we're partnered with a lot of different organizations to, to make it happen. Um, and like I said before, being flexible is really important on where these trails go. Um, and in using those tools uh, to make sure these trails are protected. I'm gonna say that about a thousand times, I think during this presentation, because it's so important to, to protect the trails that we, that we have. Uh, and just a note on that too, you know, the, the, how we build the trails and paths in a sustainable way is a part of protecting them um, to make sure that erosion doesn't happen, for example, uh, and, and that kind of thing. And like we were just talking about, making sure we limit the disturbance of wildlife and their habitat. Uh, this is personally really important to me. I try not to get my personal thoughts too uh, ingrained into what goes on with the path, but I, I think it is really important that we, we protect our wildlife and uh, prevent erosion from getting into the river and our streams to protect our fisheries that are down there. And for when you're looking at bears, for example, I think everyone's aware that bears are starting to encroach um, well, I don't know. It depends on how you're looking at it. We've been encroaching upon their habitat for a long time. Um, and now they're kind of encroaching on, on our homes and, and garbage cans, um, seemingly maybe a little bit more than usual, depending on how much wild food is out there for them. But if we start routing trails right through the middle of where they depend on beech nuts and berries, I think we're going to see more uh, encounters with bears in our yards and on our decks uh, 
I don't know, everyone can raise their hands who've chased a bear off their deck in the last <laughs> year or two. <laughs> uh, so if we can make sure that we're leaving critical habitat for these, these wildlife, we're going to reduce the conflicts um, that are happening in, in our valley. So I think it, uh, our, those trail organizations can play a role in how, uh, how that's happening and, and making sure that these wildlife are staying healthy and safe. Um, and down here on the left, um, sometimes wildlife move in around where we already have a trail, or in this case, the boardwalk. Uh, so here's the Beaver Dam. Uh, it's been a developing situation over the last couple of years. Um, we're working with, with Lawson's to make sure that uh, the boardwalk can be co-located and, and we can live with the beavers that are there. You know, beavers are a really important component to our valley's ecosystem, so we want to protect them. Uh, so we're, we're making sure that they are uh, compatible with one another, the boardwalk and the beavers. It's kind of fun to see this wildlife too while you're walking through. Uh, goal four, and now this is what I've mentioned a lot already in this presentation, is protecting and conserving our existing paths and trail sections. Um, and what it's really all about is making sure these kids are grandparents, that the trails are still here, and hopefully by then the whole path will be done, <laughs> more or less, and, and it's all protected under an easement or something. So that's, that's how, you know, we're looking 100 years down the road to make sure that this path doesn't go anywhere and that our trails uh, still exist so people can still get outside reliably. And part of that uh, might be a trail easement when folks are willing to either donate a trail easement. Um, sometimes we can purchase one if it's a priority area. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to, to Willem Jewett and his team for helping uh, do these. Uh, as, a, as a donated service. Um, so we've got five uh, new trail easements happening right now. I'm kind of doing the background on them. Um, so hopefully in this year we'll have five new sections permanently protected, which is really exciting to see happen. Uh, this is the West Greenway. This, uh, this picture here, that is one of the sections that's permanently protected. Um, the town of Waitsfield actually holds that easement, which is fantastic. Uh, sometimes we need to purchase land. Uh, in this case, this is Waits Way. The land was purchased and then uh, it was donated to the Waitsfield Elementary School. Um, so that worked out really well. Um, in the future, sometimes the path will purchase land and we may just hold on to it. Um, you know, it's a tool in our toolbox that we're, that we're holding on to um, and we'll, we'll use it when we can. And we've been growing our trail protection fund. Uh, currently, we had two amazing funding sources. The Mad River Valley uh, a Rotary Club uh, contributed a good chunk of money. So thanks to them. And then an anonymous foundation uh, donated funds as well. So uh, we're, we have some funds and we're waiting to use it on a priority project um, to complete, uh, help complete our, our mission. I don't know if everyone's going to get this reference down here. I love that movie. I thought it was funny. And uh, making sure that landowners know that they're appreciated is super important. Uh, so um, I'm going to be working on some improved appreciation tools um, once we can start socializing again, whenever that may be. It's going to be a fun little party that we'll put together um, just to celebrate the landowners and make sure that they know that we really appreciate their, their generosity for hosting trail and path sections. Um, and part of good communication too is, is an important part of that, which I mentioned earlier on. Uh, this part is maybe one of the more boring parts for folks in general to, to hear about, but it's obviously really important for us in the path to be financially sustainable and financially strong. So we can continue this year round work uh, we have the staff to continue, continually be working on it. Um, and also that includes the trail protection fund um, and an operating reserve. So we can, when times get weird, like things have been in the last year, um, we can, we can still hang on financially. Um, it also helps having a really generous, um, supportive community like we do. We have a lot of support from businesses and individuals. So, I mean, thanks to, I'm sure, Pretty much everyone here has donated, so thank you very much. Um, a lot of businesses help keep us going. And the Trail Protection Fund, too, just keep growing that so we can uh, take advantage of projects um, when we can. And that includes, uh, you know, all this fun stuff that I get to think about um, on a daily basis, and the board gets to, 
to think about and act on. Um, these are all things here. I don't have to read them all off. We can talk about them more if you want. I just thought this would probably be the least interesting part to folks. So I'm not gonna dive into it too much. Um, that last bullet point though is important. We're right back to the community support. We have support from the towns that go to uh, the Madaru Valley Rec District. And the Rec District um, there then there uh, supports uh, the PATH and many other organizations with grants. So it's, it's really important that we have grants like that locally, but there's also uh, a lot of grants that we and folks like the Mad River Riders get from the state and federal. Um, so we're bringing in money from all over the place, which is great. Uh, and then our last goal here is uh, making sure that we can engage people with the outdoors. So, uh, you know, you've probably heard me this, say this before, but the PATH over the last 30 years has done an amazing job with providing a gateway to get getting people outdoors. Um, I think the PATH can play a role in taking that next step um, and helping engage people with nature and the outdoors even further. So a couple of things that we've started recently is like the bird bingo card, which you can see a picture of it here take that out with your family throughout the summer you just fold it up and put it in your car or your pocket or whatever and just start checking off birds that you see so it's a really fun activity to do um, and i'll probably update that with some a different card this year at some point um, another thing that we did we uh, with the madsonian museum and there'll be some updates on this soon is trying to find the biggest tree in the mad river valley um, and you can find more info about that on our website so that's just another way to get people out exploring um, and then story, uh, story walk is another thing that we partnered on with uh, the Mad River Libraries, and we've had them over the years. Um, we're trying to get one or two out a year per year, so uh, one one out per year um, over the various path sections, um, which is a fun way thing for families to to go out and do, especially with little kids. Um, so we'll continue to, to develop these programs uh, as long as they're strengthening uh, the organization and providing an asset to the community or, or a benefit to the community. Um, and then on the, the kind of the big uh, idea that we've been talking about a little bit is, is maybe down the road we can establish some sort of nature center for the community um, with some other partners. So we're still thinking about how we might do that. Um, so hopefully we can make it happen. And I'll just talk a little bit about what we're up to for this year. Uh, There'll definitely be a lot more projects in 2022 and after, but I just want to give you kind of a little bit of a heads up on what we're up to. So we're working on the permits for this still, should be complete pretty soon, uh, but we're going to be adding this approximately one mile loop uh, at yestermorrow. So that blue line that you can see on this map is the new path section that we added this year down on the main campus down to Route 100. Uh, there is a crossing here with good line of sight on either side. The state is actually adding recreation crossing signs for us um, to help improve the safety there. So that's, that's pretty neat. This is a beautiful little field. Um, and once you get up here on campus, um, the, the new trail will head up the hill, do this little lollipop loop um, to come down. So that'll be a single track multi-use uh, trail. And hopefully sooner than later, we'll be able to make a connection off the top of this loop um, and get elsewhere. Uh, so hopefully it's setting us up for some more connections. Uh, we're going to be building kind of a, a gateway, if you will, um, to Fiddler's Walk. Uh, and if you're not familiar with where that is, it's one of the reasons why we're doing this, to kind of gain a, uh, a better visual for people to know that it's there. So here, I should have done a more zoomed out map. Sorry, I didn't. But here's the cemetery that's uh, kind of next to Mihirons and behind them at Taco. Currently, here's the trailhead down here, and it comes down and it goes down on private land um, to Fiddler's Green through the woods. And it's a beautiful little walking section. And there's, it gets you, so you could bike on it, you can walk on it, run, whatever, ski on it if you wanted to. But it gets you off of Route 100 on that nasty corner where 17 hits. So it's a really nice area uh, to get people off the road and down towards the LaRue uh, swim hole and flatbread and that way. So this uh, is a new section that'll happen uh, this year, we did get some uh, rec district funds, and again, we're just finalizing some permits for that. Uh, and I just wanted to highlight too, I don't know if you can see it, but there's this little blue polygon here. Um, this is going to be a stormwater prevention feature. Um, that's why we have Ira here in this picture with Friends of the Mad River. One of the things we're partnering with them on this year um, is preventing a lot of erosion that's coming off of this parking lot. We are going to be increasing the impervious surface with this new path. 
um, there's some erosion on the bank that heads down to the river. So partnering with them just makes sense to, to create the stormwater prevention feature there. So we'll keep, keep our eyes out for opportunities to uh, improve our, our ecosystem and natural resources as we're building trails and, and paths. Uh, we'll continue to do more Millbrook Trail improvements, um, especially as it's becoming more important for that downtown to Long Trail connection. Um, we're, you know, it's a pretty old, well, 20 some, almost 30 years old trail. It's really, I don't know if everyone's been on it. It's a little bit rugged, but it's a really nice trail and it goes across it's six or seven private landowners. So it's a really nice uh, community involved project that, that's been going for a while. So we're continually making improvements. It definitely has some challenges, uh, but it's well worth the effort, I think, to continue um, improving it. It's just a beautiful chunk of trail. It really feels like you're kind of out there, even though you're not that far from things. Down here is uh, the new boardwalk that we built behind the Swanson Inn and on Karen Anderson's land. Um, a couple of our pretty amazing landowner partners. Uh, it always continues every year, ongoing vegetation management, which is fancy for mowing and cutting back branches, uh, removing fallen trees, that kind of thing. So that, that's always happening. Um, and some we contract some of that work out. Um, otherwise, we're, we're doing it ourselves. Sometimes I get, here's my wife Elizabeth on the chainsaw. Sometimes she gets out there, <laughs> shows, shows me how to use a chainsaw. Uh, one thing we started last year and we're continuing this year, it's kind of an ongoing experiment, but it seems to be working out pretty well, is clearing the snow between Post Office Road and Carroll Road, which includes a new boardwalk down Route 100. So Lawson's staff has been very generous with their time in keeping some of that uh, cleared, including the Carroll Road boardwalk. And then KMK Property Management is doing this section. You can kind of look over to ICS from here, from the Scadium, which is this section and then all the way down to Post Office Road next to Taste Place. Uh, we had a perfect storm of broken equipment the last couple of weeks, unfortunately, so some snow piled up. So sorry if folks are expecting more of a cleared boardwalk. Um, we're, we're trying to get it scraped, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep the new snow off at least. So, so thanks to those groups for partnering with us on keeping downtown clear so people can walk and, and ride downtown in the middle of winter. Um, and like we talked about before, we'll continue some uh, some outdoor programs. If anyone has ideas on what you think would be really fun, let me know. I was thinking about creating like a, a fungus bingo. There's uh, it's a lot of fungus out there in the woods and it's pretty neat stuff. Um, not all of it you wanna eat, of course, but uh, could be a fun thing to go ID some fungus. Uh, here's Peter, I think I saw Peter was on this call. Here's Peter up in the top right, uh, measuring one of his big maples out in front as part of the big tree challenge. So uh, yeah, let me know if anyone has ideas on, on what you like to see around outdoor programming. And as always, planning, scheming, permitting, fundraising, a little more planning is always happening. Uh, one of the most fun parts of my job is that I get to go scout for new trails at times. So I get to see giant pine trees and give them a big old hug sometimes and go check out some really cool areas. Um, so some of that, um, some of that get, gets to happen. Otherwise it's like looking at parcel maps, checking out what might work, who owns it, or you know, landowners. So there's a lot of this, uh, this kind of planning and scheming that happens throughout the year. Um, and it's really important. It's really what, what keeps uh, the new paths coming and the new sections coming. Um, and as always, just wanna identify all of our, our generous partners and donors, supporters. Um, these are um, beyond all of the something like 400 plus individuals who are super generous and donate to us every year. There's a lot of businesses that donate services or time um, or, or money and products too. So thanks to all of them. And I believe that's, that's it for what I have. So I'm gonna stop yeah. sharing and I'm gonna open it up for if anybody has any questions or comments or whatever you wanna say. You can either use the little hand raising thing or you can just uh, chime in. Just say thanks, Ross, for putting that together. That was a good summary, I think, of everything that has been done and what we hope to do in the near future. Yeah, is there anything Great. you want to add, Mac? Not really. I mean, you pretty much covered the whole thing. Right, the thing um, I forgot was you can buy this sweet hat. Um, off the MRP website. Um, yeah. 
pickup system going that's pretty safe um, or I can ship it as well. Anyways, shameless plug. <laughs> Well, Ross, if I, I could chip in, I appreciate great presentation. I yeah. also appreciate that you're still there making the presentation. That's good <laughs> <Thank> news. <laughs> and I, I did have two possibly related questions. Is, is number one, can you disclose how much money is in the reserve fund that you mentioned? And uh, the other question is, is there any prospect of a bridge at Fiddler's Green over the Millbrook? Yeah, awesome questions. So the first one, uh, yes, we have 35,000 currently um, in our trail protection fund. Um, and we're always looking for ways to, to grow that. Um, so that can, that can definitely grow. Uh, and the bigger it is, of course, the more uh, able we are to take advantage of projects um, that pop up. Um, two, uh, I did spend some time uh, last year looking into that prospect of a bridge over the Mill River. Uh, it's a little bit of a tricky section, both from river uh, dynamics um, and room that the room that's there uh, between the private land on one side um, and then the Austin parcel town owned on the other. But anyways, I can, I can definitely go into all the details, all that um, and all the science and everything that I learned with uh, Vermont DEC and VTrans. But to sum it up, I think we're going to have to wait until that bridge on Route 100 is rebuilt. And I believe it's, I was told it's in the five to eight year timeline for that to be rebuilt. Uh, the beams on that originally, I think are from 1920 something. So it's about time that the whole bridge is, is rebuilt. And when that does get rebuilt, um, we're gonna advocate really hard to make sure that there's a pedestrian section off to one side, probably on the, uh, what is that? The east side, uh, opposite of flatbread. And that way it can really hook right up smoothly into the Fiddler's Green area and then to the south hook up right into the Austin parcel or the Austin walk. So unfortunately I don't think there's going to be a separate bridge there uh, but I think we're going to be able to get a nice off-road option for people to bike on and, and to walk on um, within the next decade. I wish it was sooner but that's just up to when VTrans is going to get to it um, and I should note too that the path with partners um, was able in the past to create two, what do you call them, under, under crossings, maybe, uh, you know, just south of there to get the flat bread, you can go underneath the bridge. And then again, at the Kingsbury Bridge down next to the, the Sugarbush Pond, you can get underneath it too. So we've had some success with, with bridges, bridge work. Uh, so thanks for the question. That's really good. And I think I have something related here from, from Ryan at the Mad River Riders. Um, yeah, so, yep. so he was just reminding me that uh, the riders, thanks for that, Ryan, they're working on um, a bridge upstream that's kind of behind local folk to connect to their new connector that goes up to Revolution. So just upstream from there, there should be a new bridge in the next um, maybe year or two. I know they're going through the, the permitting, um, so that's a neat, neat project to be aware of, too. Yeah, Alice, do you have your hand I do. Virtually raised. Yes, I do. Um, um, so Bob Cook and I are both here from the Waitsfield Planning Commission. And I thought you would want to know, because I think this will be a useful tool for you when you're planning new paths, is we are in the process right now of developing new mapping that will map our critical forest blocks and our critical habitats a wildlife habitats and critical wildlife crossings. Is that a part and of that? We're doing the, yes, our 171, oh. 171. Um, compliance yeah. and review. And we're working with the Conservation Commission and also Jens Hilke from um, Fish and Wildlife. Mm -hmm. um, we need it for 171, Act 171 compliance. And this will eventually go into our, our town plan but we're getting to a very granular level here. Um, the big news is Waitsfield is benefiting from first time some cutting edge technology is going to be used to do this mapping. Um, we definitely discuss when we're looking at the, um, our Irisville zoning and growth areas, uh, we really do um, consider the Mad River Path as part of our growth 
in Waitsfield and our uh, the importance of connecting um, and improving walkability um, in the valley. But you might find this um, map that we're producing um, helpful in planning uh, where your trails go. Great. Um, this is all done a lot from uh, aerial um, and some very interesting mathematics in looking at tree cover and potential habitat and habitat crossing. Oh yeah, great, thanks. Yeah, so I'll make sure you're connected with that. Appreciate that, yeah. And you actually reminded me too, something that uh, I should probably mention because it's, it's definitely relevant and interesting that the matter of our path is actually integrated into the, uh, the town plan, or the town, uh, the town, I guess they're town plans. Town plan, yes. Yep, um, so it's really nice to have the, the support kind of formally ingrained within what the towns um, plan to do. So thanks for reminding me on that as yep. well. I, I have a question. Yeah, Freddie. Um, or, I'm sorry, are, is your name Freddie or is yeah. that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's not your actual name that's on there if you're using no, someone else's. That is my actual name. Okay, great. Um, great. great. Um, I'm a longtime user of the MAD Path from the really early beginnings, and I'm really missing the connection between the end of Waits Way behind the elementary school back down to uh, uh, the old small dog. In other words, all those trails that were closed by a private landowner uh, year, se several years ago because of either poor communication, misuse of the trail, et cetera. What are your plans for making that connection again? Yeah, so I think you're referring to the East Greenway, which- uh, it's, not, it's, it's Elwyn's old land. It's Elwyn's yeah. land. Okay, yeah, and that's between. I don't know the name. I just know the trails. I okay. mean, I know where the trails are. Gotcha. Yeah, we called that. You know, the West Greenway still exists, but on the other side of the river, the East Greenway, which is a little bit longer, and that was between Tremblay Road and right. Mill Road. Right. Yeah. So uh, we're we're in continuous communication with right. the landowners in that section, trying to make something happen. Uh, there there hasn't been any movement yet, but we've been. Okay working on it you know there's other partners who are working on uh on on options you know, like we work closely with vermont land trust so hopefully something um, can happen uh, with a partner like that as well uh, another idea that i've been really hoping to to move on is opening up or expanding forgive me if i'm not i think i might not be using the exact right terminology here but something like the open space tax incentive law, which is at the municipal level, if we can expand that to include uh, trails on land that people can get at least get a, a little tax incentive for doing that, I think that could help. Um, maybe in the East Greenway area, maybe other trails too. Uh, but also going back to the uh, what we, I discussed uh, a few times, uh, just keeping communication open, making sure that people know that we're flexible. Um, a part of why that closed my understanding uh, was unleashed dogs oh. in between there. But that's not just a mad path problem. Look at the common road with all the traffic this um, winter because people are outside walking. People just don't bother to clean up after their animals. And it's, I'm afraid what the spring is gonna bring in terms of melting snow. I mean, I, it's just, I said enough. <laughs> I don't, I, think, to, I don't want to start to rant, uh, uh, but it, it's hard, you know, people yeah. just don't, it, it's, you, no, so, okay. I, I hear you for sure. It's, it's an ongoing uh, situation and, and really what I've, where I've landed on it is that I feel like it has to be a culture change or a culture shift within our community yeah. here, but also just kind of in general across the country, you know, speaking with some colleagues like over in Montana, for example, um, with the, it's the Gladden Valley Land Trust, you know, they're running the exact same okay. dog issues that we are, um, we're, it's, it's on our minds a lot of how to address it. Um, you know, if it comes down to it, uh, if it's a new path section that won't allow dogs because of the landowner interest, you know, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll open up a path section with a caveat that 
there are no dogs. You'd rather have the path section there. Thank um, you. But Ellen, um, Ellen's issue had more to do with loose dogs, dogs yeah. off leash, yep. chasing his cows. So he had livestock issues there. Yep. So, so it's ongoing. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll keep working on it. And I know others are going to keep working on it too, but thanks for bringing it up. Ready. Um, we did add some signs for what it's worth. <laughs> New signs um, might help with two uh, percent, but if we keep adding two percent, two percent here, it'll add up, and we'll, we'll make some good progress. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions or comments or anything else? Yeah, Eric, you're muted. By the way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to being muted here. Uh, first of all, I'm really glad to uh, have Ross back uh, in the saddle. And um, we're really excited at the chamber to have a partner uh, like the Mad River Path, and especially with, with Ross, because he's such a valuable resource to us. And I just want everyone to know that the business community here in the Valley really values um, what the Path and the other trails organizations uh, provide for this community. And the reason that people come here is because of our recreational access and, uh, and, and, you know, and, and the trail system. Um, and, um, you know, we are super supportive of what this organization is trying to do. And I want everyone to be well aware that Ross uh, and the folks at the Mad River Riders and the, and, and the other folks in the Trails Collaborative and the Friends of the Mad River are all working very closely um, to try to steward these um, resources as best we can uh, and address those issues like the dogs and um, uh, and just the overcrowding, you know, that that's that's occurred of late. Um, and the fact that our trails, our trails and uh, swim holes are getting a lot more use. So uh, I really appreciate, again, having Ross back working at the uh, at the path and look forward to working with you going forward. And um Again, I'm real proud of the fact that we, how, how this Trails Collaborative has really worked so closely together. So it's been a good, it's been a good thing. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Yeah, it's really important to, uh, I think, note again, you just said the Trails Collaborative. It's, it's, it's helping improve the cohesiveness and the collaboration, um, hence it's called the Collaborative, um, among the various organizations here in the Valley. Like I said before, there's something like 27 different organizations and not everyone are, are, are super involved, but uh, you know, the major ones that are here are, are highly involved. And the, the kiosk project came out of that, um, you know, with, with a lot of work from the Josh and the planning commission in particular, but without the collaborative, those big, beautiful uh, trailhead kiosks uh, wouldn't have happened without that, I don't think. Uh, so, and there's gonna be some more really interesting initiatives um, like Eric just mentioned, the stewardship of our trails and our trailheads are continually going to be an improvement um, because of the Trails Collaborative. Uh, we're working pretty closely um, to make that happen. Can I say something? Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, I too am delighted to see both the collaboration and the connectivity of the trails continue. Um, I had two thoughts. One, a long time ago, I had mentioned um, putting a map up someplace, either a physical paper one or an online one where literally everyone, every property owner in the community could actually yellow in their section saying they would be a willing candidate for the connectivity. Um, and that way you could see like where the patterns were, where people were willing to help you out versus like continuing to pursue the same properties where they were saying no all the time. I don't know if anybody ever actually listened to me when I said that, but I always thought it would work pretty well in terms of highlighting who was receptive. Um, so that's still out there. And then the other thought was, um, I personally, I have a dog and I always carry little, uh, biodegradable bags. So some of us do take care of our dogs, but, um, I think two things really help one. I think having those bags sale tra trail side for people that don't have the bags, is helpful. Um, and I also think when we have, uh, events like the race in the fall, um, as some of the prizes, you could actually have some of the recycle, like the biodegradable bags you buy, like you can buy them in bulk. So they're not as expensive. Um, and they're very, they're little green, you know, rolls. You just stick them in your pocket is very easy, but you sort of have to get into the habit of doing that. And I think if you could kind of promote that a little bit by like giving the boxes away of those as prizes or that type of thing, it might um, occur to people that it's really not very hard to carry your own little 
biodegradable bags. It's really not that difficult. Um, so that's just a thought as well. But thank you for all you're doing. I'm thrilled with everything I'm seeing and can't wait to walk the path this summer or maybe this winter. <laughs> yeah, snowshoe and ski it too if you yeah. want. But yeah, no, thanks for those thoughts. That's a really interesting idea on that uh, kind of a community map interest. Um, I'll have to think on that and, and see if, you know, what would be a good format for that. It's a good idea. But you also bring up a good point. I'd say most dog owners are pretty responsible. It's just a, a smaller percentage um, that kind of ruin it for the rest of us. Um, but yeah, it is good to acknowledge what is working well and, and to thank those people who are keeping their dogs on leashes and, and picking up their poop and all that. It's also really helpful in the spring for people to see the damage because I know, I know my husband wasn't really a believer until he went out one spring and saw how many dog piles there were. And he now is like semi-fanatical about making sure we have our bags because he saw how dreadful it is when nobody picks up their dog mess. Um, because, you know, one pile is not a big deal, but when you have like 3000 piles, it really is quite a problem. So I, I think people can change. They just need to understand what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that uh, Lake Champlain committee does up in Burlington every year for April Fool's Day, instead it's called April Stools Day. And they go around with little like marking flags and they stick it in where there's a pile of poop like down on the waterfront. It's unbelievable how many flags there are. Um, you know, that many, it's, it's a public health concern for sure, especially once people start swimming. So, well, uh, maybe that's something we want to do here. I don't know, but I know Friends of the Mad River have been um, working on the awareness alongside of us on that issue too. I think there also needs to be a reminder that putting uh, dog poop in the bag is only step one. <laughs> you have to take it with you yep. rather than leaving it on the side of the common road or at the side of the trail. Just because it's in a biodegradable bag doesn't mean it's any less unpleasant to be around. That's a really good point, Freddie. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think, I think most people usually backtrack and get, pick them up on the way back to their cars or whatever, but I think sometimes they forget. Yeah. Um, another, and I, I'm sorry to say so many things, but one other idea I had was, I think every spring, if you also had like a, a communal poop cleanup day where you have people like Don, you know, rubber gloves or something and all come down and just sort of do a kind of like green up day, trash day. Mm -hmm. I think you could also poop have day. a poop cleanup day, which also brings awareness to the problem as well. Mm -hmm. And gets rid of it too. Yeah, it's an interesting thought. I like it. Or you could all just get cats. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Yeah, Eric, you come and clean my litter box. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And we're going to be talking about uh, picking up after your cat poop. I don't think a trail has ever been closed because of a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a mountain lion, but not a kitty cat. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any other, any thoughts or ideas that you want to share? And of course, if you think of something later, you know, let us know um, all our contact info is on our website and probably strewed about on a bunch of other places. But always happy to chat. Uh, yeah. Peter, do you have something? Yeah, I just wondered if there's anything you can say publicly about the prospects for connecting the uh, the new Yes Tomorrow Loop north towards Waitsfield. Um, I don't have any solid leads on uh, from the Yes Tomorrow property going up. Sugarbush does own some land up above that that maybe someday we could take advantage of. Um, I think uh, that's that's probably not this year that we'll get anything figured out. Um, but we have looked into some other options closer to Route 100 that we're, I think we're making a little bit of progress on, um, but just because of landowner privacy, don't want to say too much at this point, but I think we're making some good progress near closer to Route 100 um, to get part of it at least. And I could just add in that the uh, property that Bobby and I just purchased now live on in acres uh, next to the river, between Route 100 and the river we are uh, donating an easement to the path to cross it. So hopefully that will connect into what you're talking about. Yes, tomorrow, eventually to the south and hopefully keep going north. Yeah, hopefully that opens up some doors. Um, and, and like 
Mac, I think you were just alluding to, sometimes all it takes is one property owner to just open up the floodgates in a good way for us. Maybe that's yeah. not the best analogy, but uh, to really to really help us to kind of can uh, get things rolling when one landowner says, yeah, let's do it. Um, then all the neighbors get excited about it too, I think, sometimes. Because Ross, my, my objective is to live long enough to see Warren and Whitesfield connected. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it or not. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll do my best to make that happen, of course, Peter. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's really interesting to see, you know, all of a sudden there there might be, and it, it's happened in the last couple of years, all of a sudden there's like two or three landowners who get a hold of us and say they're interested. So sometimes out of nowhere. So who knows, you know, what could happen? Something big could, could really happen soon. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, thanks. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, Again, we'll post this up. If you want to watch it again and again, you can. <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll keep trucking. So let us know if you have thoughts, ideas in the future. And uh, you know, it's a community effort, so we'll keep working together, make it happen. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Raj. Yep. Thanks.